guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sammy and I'm an illustrator. Today I have some really exciting things to share with you. I got some pins for my shop, so I will share the unboxing of those with you now. I'll insert that now. Okay, here we go. These are gonna be the seal pins and the Rococo bunny pins. Oh my gosh. Wow. That looks awesome. It's a little bigger than I like thought it was gonna be, but it looks so good. Wow. Look at that. Doesn't it look so good? Here's the back side. It's awesome. Okay. Those look so good. There's so much detail. Wow. That's going to be awesome. Yay. And then little pink, pink backs. Wow. Yay. Okay. So those are in my shop. If you haven't bought one already, you can purchase one. But the other thing is that I'm going to be redrawing one of my old pieces today. And it might be a little controversial because it is still a very popular piece in my shop and I still really like it, but I just think that some things have changed and I wanna try it again. So let me show you what that is. Okay guys, so today I'm gonna to be um, redrawing this character Wesley. I started this um, on July 11th, 2017. It is now April 22nd, 2020. And um, I went back to my Instagram to find my very first post of him, which was this. And I had completely forgotten that I used to start off with my pen instead of finish with my pen. Um, so that's something that's really changed for me. I only start with the pen after the pencil on pet portraits, but um, for my characters, that is my finishing touch now. So yeah, this is the uh, initial drawing for him, and then this is how he turned out, and he's been really popular in my shop. Um, I don't look at him and think, oh my gosh, there's so many things wrong, or anything like that. Um, I mean, there's, there's things I would change, but I just really wanted to try to do him again and see how I would do him now because it has been like three years and I know my style has been developing and changing a little bit. So I thought it would be a good challenge to give myself and also just see how he turns out. Um, one thing that does really bother me now is where his tail is coming from. It's like coming from the side of him. It's not just like sticking out from the side, but it's like hooked up high on his back. So that's something I'm going to fix with the uh, other one. But I'm going to start sketching digitally using some reference photos that um, Alex took and some from Google. And I will show you guys that process now.
So this is my new sketch of him. You can see that um, after doing the digital version, I actually changed his feet a little bit. Um, yeah, but anyway, time to get started painting. So today while I painted, I thought that I might do a little voiceover um, and talk about style and art style in particular. Um, I think that it's something that there's a lot of pressure on, especially um, if you're a new artist, you're maybe just beginning to share your work online and you feel like your work isn't cohesive enough. Um, and now that everyone can see what you're posting and what you're creating, you feel like there just needs to be so much cohesion um, between piece to piece. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, I would say that something that helped me find my style I've talked about a lot was um, starting to draw with pen and not allow myself to erase that much and it just helped me to see how my hand naturally moves. Um, but I also, I looked at other art that I liked and I took note of the things about it that I liked, um, taking care not to copy something completely. Um, but also I think just discovering what I liked to draw, which is mainly animals, um, really helped because when I draw an animal, I really want it to look like that animal. Um, it's just kind of my natural desire. And so I don't end up stylizing them a ton. And you guys can see as I do this that it really ends up being pretty different from my original drawing of Wesley. I really thought that when I was making that original one, I was trying to make it as realistic as I could, but still be an animal character. Um, I mean, keep in mind also, I'm not doing like a major expression on his face. Um, I kind of like it just being a calm, <laughs> I guess you could say kind of blank, but, um, I, I just like that for my first character drawing and it does seem to be something that people like in my shop versus some kind of like really, you know, exuberant expression on the face. But, um, when I think back to doing that original drawing of him, I worked mostly in watercolor um, and pen. I don't know that I hardly used any other medium. And you're gonna see me as I do this using like maybe five. Um, and that is primarily just because over the years, um, it was three years ago that I did that. Over the years, I've just kind of allowed myself to start experimenting with new mediums. And I also find that sometimes I might start in a certain medium and I can't get to the point, um, I can't get the illustration looking how I want it to by only using one medium. So I definitely recommend taking some time and experimenting with new mediums that inspire you and It'll help you to know how they work and you can use them together. And I just think that it really expands your opportunities for what your art can look like. And also like your efficiency of working and um, just, you know, make your process more pleasant. So like, for example, right now I'm using this white jelly roll pen and that is so helpful because before I had that, I would have probably been watercoloring around all of those whiskers and it would have affected the look of it or trying to use white paint, which doesn't seem like it works quite as well. Um, so I definitely recommend experimenting with some different mediums um, so that you can just kind of expand your repertoire <laughs> um, of mediums that you know how to work with. And yeah, and I, and I do think that it can help with your style. Um, something that I think is a main difference um, in how my art has been developing over the past few years is getting to be a little bit more bold with my use of paint and color and texture. Um, it's partly as a result of having a conversation um, with an art director um, slash mentor who recommended that I work on kind of bringing up the intensity in some of my pieces and adding a little more contrast. And at first I was really hesitant about it, but as I started allowing myself to experiment with it, I really found that I love it. And it's something that I continuously um, add into my work, um, maybe a pop of a bright color 
or even as you'll see here, just layering more and more paint to get a richer look. And are you happy with them? Um, I feel like really rusty for some reason with watercolors. I think he's gonna turn out okay, but right now I'm just feeling really rusty. Like I feel like he's looking like my very, very first things I ever did. I don't know if it's I'm still not used to this paper. I might try him on the other watercolor paper to see, but I think he might turn out okay. He's just at this weird stage right now. Or I don't know what I think. Okay, so I had to stop talking just for a second while um, the audio played of what I was doing there because it's kind of interesting to hear what I'm thinking while I'm painting. Um, sometimes I don't like to show artwork in progress, especially if it's for a client because it can look really in a weird stage that I feel like no one else can see the vision for it, especially if I don't. So um, yeah, because I, I really ended up being happy with how this turned out, but in the middle of the process, I was still feeling really unsure. But like I said, you can see me going in with a lot of different mediums and he's gonna just end up looking a lot more solid than he did before. Um, so yeah, I think that there's a lot of pressure on finding your style, but the catch to that is that once you do feel like, you know, maybe you found your style or you're starting to create work that feels more consistent, when you, um, when you go through a new life experience, it kind of changes your viewpoint of what you're drawing or maybe inspires you in a new way. Um, you try a new medium, all of these things are going to create subtle changes in your work. And it can be kind of scary once you have put your art out there and started to be more consistent with your style and people begin to know you for a certain thing. Um, I definitely think that this illustration feels like mine and it feels in line with, um, with my work, but it is a little bit more realistic and... I think that since I did the first drawing, um, I think I've gotten better at drawing, better at like draftsmanship of making something look like it is supposed to. Um, now that's not to say that like a realistic style is better than an unrealistic style, but if what I'm going for is realism to an extent, then, <laughs> then I think that I am improving in that way. Um, yeah, and there's also a lot of pressure, or at least I feel this, um, as an artist to be loose with your work and that if your work is more loose that you are better um, or more artistic or more creative or something. And there are definitely times when my work is very loose and I'm happy with that. Um, but there's other circumstances where I want to add a little bit more tight detail and just like really celebrate the thing that I'm drawing. And I think that's kind of what I'm doing here. And it also just has to do with your mood. You know, you might be going through a time when you wanna draw something more naturalistic because you are thinking about that animal, um, maybe in like a more scientific way or something um, versus just like the idea of that animal or the idea of that subject. So it really depends on your application and your audience. Um, like my graphic novel is a little bit more simple and a little bit looser and I feel like that really fits the spirit of what I'm making but it can be really hard to feel like maybe the work isn't quite consistent with other pieces I'm making. So I don't know that I really have answers here but I just thought it would be interesting to kind of share my thoughts on that um, and yeah just share kind of what it feels like when you are an artist that's somewhat established and people recognize your work um, and you start to notice a little bit of a change, especially maybe after a few years where things feel like they've stayed fairly consistent. Um, I look at my shop and actually most of the things that have stayed in my shop that are very um, popular still are from a few years ago. Um, some of the newer things that I've done haven't stayed in the shop very long because they haven't done as well. So. Um, it's always it's always difficult, but I think the most important thing is that when you're creating art, you feel like you aren't making it to please someone else, but you're doing it to push yourself um, to enjoy it, and that you are feeling like you're happy with and true to yourself with what you're making. And I think the more that you're doing something for yourself in terms of artwork, the less likely it is going to be that you're gonna be copying someone else's style. 
um, or doing something that feels super trendy at the time, really popular. So that is my advice and my thoughts on this. Um, I'd love for you guys to comment below and tell me what you think about style changing, um, if you feel like you're still trying to find your style. Um, and I just, you know, want to reiterate that it's style is always going to be changing and you might have a time that you feel like you've had a breakthrough, but um, as long as you're pushing yourself and trying new things, there's always going to be a little bit of a change over time and you might not realize it until things have changed a lot. Um, I even noticed that with artists that I follow, um, like I think of Fran, um, Fran Nerd. I love her work and I followed her for years and I didn't notice a quick change in her style, but if you scroll back through her work, there's like this very gradual transition to what she does today. Um, and I think that's really comforting because obviously she's very successful and it seems, you know, to be working for her obviously to be drawing in a way that she loves and that she feels connected to right now. So I think that's just encouraging to the rest of us to continue to work and experiment with things and just enjoy what we're doing. So I'm really happy with how he's turning out. Um, I'm just letting the watercolor on his sweater dry and I'm looking at him compared to the first one I did and I'm thinking about it and like trying to figure out, I think like what I did now, I think that is what I was going for when I did this. I think that's what I was going for. Um, but it is a pretty different style. I mean, it's just more detailed um, or more accurate maybe, but I'm really happy with it. I hope you guys like how it turns out. It's always kind of scary um, because he's a very well-loved character, um, but I think it still feels like it's mine. So I'm really, really happy with how it's turning out. Um, I will show you the progress and then I have to um, fix a few things, but yeah, let me show you. Okay, here he is so far. So I just um, am waiting for his sweater. It's almost dry. Waiting for his sweater to dry so that I can do the pen on it. And I'm also gonna go in with my white jelly roll, I think, and fix a little bit of the, uh, the mug. Other than that though, I'm just so happy with it. It's been so cool getting to see this Ripper Otter um, in person, um, just to like observe them in reality. <laughs> kind of gives you, I don't know, a new appreciation or a new sense of what they look like. I don't know, but I think it's just been really helpful. Um, and also Alex getting some pictures was great because I could reference them and yeah just really really fun one of my favorite animals Okay, well, I think he's all done. Um, oh, actually, I need to fix his whiskers. Um, add them like over the turtleneck a little bit, but um, I will go ahead and insert some finished product uh, scanned images and photographs of him so that you can see how he turned out and see all the details.
that's it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed seeing the process of this and hopefully he will be in my shop soon i'm planning on also redoing charles the sea otter i still love him but i just i have to try now that wesley his friend is done so anyway thank you guys for watching um if you're not already please subscribe and like this video it helps me out a lot um, I also have a class on Skillshare right now. You can get two free months via the link below and I can teach you my process for coming up with and creating animal characters if you want to try it yourself. So yep, that link is below. My shop link is below. Everything is below. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.